Well, thanks for inviting me here today. I, I have to say that this uh, is pretty far from my usual kind of venue, but I have spent my life working on the science and technology of computation and AI, and uh, perhaps some of what I know can be helpful here today. So, first of all, here's, here's a way I think one can kind of frame the issue. So many of the most successful internet companies like Google and Facebook and Twitter are what one can call automated content selection businesses. They ingest lots of content, and then they essentially use AI to select what to actually show to their users. How does that AI work? How can one tell if it's doing the right thing? People often assume that computers just run algorithms that someone sat down and wrote. But modern AI systems don't work that way. Instead, lots of the programs they use are actually constructed automatically, usually by learning from some massive number of examples. And if you go look inside those programs, there's usually embarrassingly little that we humans can understand in there. And here's the real problem. It's sort of a fact of basic science that if you insist on explainability, then you can't get the full power of a computational system or an AI. So if you can't open up the AI and understand what it's doing, how about sort of putting external constraints on it? Can you, like, write a contract that says what the AI is allowed to do? Well, partly actually through my own work, we're starting to be able to formulate computational contracts, contracts that are written not in legalese, but in a precise, executable, computational language suitable for an AI to follow. But what should the contract say? I mean, what's the right answer for what should be at the top of someone's news feed? Or what exactly should be the algorithmic rule for balance or diversity of content? Well, as AIs start to run more and more of our world, uh, we're going to have to develop a whole network of kind of AI laws. And it's going to be super important to get this right. Uh, probably starting off by agreeing on sort of the right AI constitution. But it's going to be a hard thing, kind of making computational how people want the world to work. Right now, that's still in the future. But OK, so what can we do about people's concerns now about automatic content selection? I have to say that I don't see a purely technical solution. Um, but I didn't want to come here and say that everything is impossible, especially since I personally like to spend my life solving, quotes impossible problems. In fact, I think that if we want to do it, we actually can use technology to set up kind of a market-based solution. I've got a couple of concrete suggestions about how to do that. Uh, both uh, are based on giving users a choice about who to trust for the final content they see. Uh, one of the suggestions introduces what I call final ranking providers. The other introduces constraint providers. In both cases, these are third-party providers who basically insert their own little AIs into the pipeline of delivering content to users. And the point is that users can choose which of these providers they want to trust. Uh, the idea is to leverage everything that the big automated content selection businesses have, but to essentially add a new market layer. So users get to know that they're picking a particular way that content is selected for them. It also means that you get to avoid kind of all or nothing banning of content and you don't have kind of a single point of failure for spreading bad content. And you open up a new market, potentially delivering even higher value for users. Of course, for better or worse, unless you decide to force certain content or diversity of content, which you could, people can live kind of in their own content bubbles, though importantly, they get to choose those themselves. Well, there are lots of technical details about everything I'm saying, as well as some deep science about what's possible and what's not. And I tried to explain a little bit more about that in my written testimony. Um, and I'm happy to try and answer whatever questions I can here. Thank you. From in your prepared testimony, you write that it's possible to expect, impossible, I should say, to expect any useful form of uh, general explainability for automated content selection systems. If this is the case, what should policymakers require or expect of internet platforms with respect to algorithm explanation or transparency? I don't think that uh, explaining how algorithms work is a, is a great direction. I mean, the basic issue is if the algorithm is doing something really interesting, then you're not going to be able to explain it. Because if you could explain it, it would be like saying you can jump ahead and say what it's going to do without letting it just do what it's going to do. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a, a scientific issue that if you're going to have something that is, is explainable, then it isn't getting to use the sort of full power of computation to do what it does. So my own view, which is sort of disappointing for me as a technologist, is that you actually have to put humans in the loop. And in a sense, 
the thing to understand about AI is we can automate many things about how things get done. What we don't get to automate is the goals of what we want to do. The goals of what we want to do are not something that are, is sort of definable as an automatic thing. The goals of what we want to do is something that humans have to come up with. And so I think the, the most uh, promising direction is to think about breaking kind of the AI pipeline and figuring out where you can put into that AI pipeline the right level of kind of human input. Um, my own feeling is the most promising possibility is to kind of insert, to, to leave the great value that's been produced by the current automated content selection companies um, in ingesting large amounts of data, being able to monetize large amounts of uh, content, et cetera, but to insert a way for users to be able to choose who they trust about what finally shows up in their news feed or in their search results or whatever else. And I think that there are technological ways to make that kind of insertion that will actually, if anything, add to the, uh, the, the richness of potential experience for users and possibly even the financial returns for, uh, for the market. Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you to our witnesses. We appreciate that you are here, and I enjoyed visiting with you for a few minutes before uh, the hearing began. Mr. Wolfram, I want to pick up where we had discussed and. In your testimony, uh, computational irreducibility. And look at that for just a, a moment. <clears throat> As we talk about this, does it make algorithmic transparency sound increasingly elusive? And would you consider that moving toward that uh, transparency is a worthy goal, or should we be asking another question? Yeah, I think you know there are different meanings to transparency. You know, there are there are. If you are asking, tell me why the algorithm did this versus that, that's really hard. Mm -hmm. And if we really want to be able to answer that, we're not going to be able to have algorithms that do anything very powerful, because in a sense, by being able to say this is why it did that well, we might as well just follow the path that we use to explain it rather than have it do it what it needed to do itself. So, I mean, so the transparency, what we can't do is try to get a pragmatic result. Yeah, we, we, can't, we can't go inside. We can't open up the hood okay. and say, why did this happen? And that's why I think uh, the other problem is knowing what you want to have happen. Like you say, this algorithm is bad. This algorithm gives bad recommendations. What do you mean by bad recommendations? You have to be able to define something that says, oh, the thing is biased in this way, the thing is producing content we didn't like. How okay. do you, you know, you have to be able to give a way to define those, those bad things. All right. Mr. Wolfram, um, you mentioned uh, in your testimony there could be a single content platform but a variety of final ranking providers. Are you suggesting that it would be wise to prohibit companies from using cross-business data flows? I'm not sure how that relates to, I mean, the, you know, my, the, the thing that I think is the case is it is not necessary to have the final ranking of content. That there's a lot of work that has to be done to get content ready to be finally ranked for a news feed or for search results and so on. That's a lot of heavy lifting. The, the choice, which is made often separately for each user, about how to finally rank content, I don't think has to be made by the same entity. And I think if you break that apart, you kind of change the balance between what is controllable by users and what is not. I don't think it's realistic to, okay. uh, that, that's, um, um, I think, um, yeah. I mean, I, I would like to say that um, one of the questions about, uh, you know, a data set implies certain things, we don't like what that implies and so on. One of the challenges is to define what we actually want. And one of the things that's happening here is that because these are AI systems, computational systems, we have to define much more precisely what we want than we've had to do before. Okay. And so it's, a, it's necessary to kind of write these computational rules, and that's a tough thing to do. And it's something which cannot be done by computer, and it can't even be necessarily done from prior data. It's something people like you guys have to decide what to do about. Okay. My question today is on transparency. So many sectors, we require transparency. We're used to it every day. Think about this for potential harm. So 
every day you go to the grocery store, the market, a convenience store. In the food industry, we have required nutrition labeling on, on every single item. It clearly discloses our nutrition content. We, can, we even have it on menus now, calorie count, oh my, maybe I won't have that Alfredo, right? You'll go for the salad. And so we've accepted this. All of our companies have done this. It's a state of, um, there isn't any food that doesn't have a label. Maybe there is some food, but basically we have it. So to empower consumers, how do you think we could address some of this transparency that maybe at the end of the day we're all talking about um, in regards to this, um, these algorithms, the data, what happens to it, how we deal with it? It's overwhelming. I think with respect to things like nutrition labels, we have the advantage that we're using 150-year-old science to say what the chemistry of what uh, is contained in a food is. Uh, things like computation and AI are a bit of a different kind of science. And they have the, this feature that this phenomenon of computational irreducibility happens. And it's not possible to just give a quick summary of what the effect of this computation is going to be. But we know, I know, having written algorithms for myself, I have kind of an expected outcome. I have a goal in there. You talk about no goals. There is a goal. Yep. Whether you meet it or not, whether you exceed it or not, whether you fail or not, there is a goal when you write an algorithm to, to give somebody who's asking the, you for this the, data. The, the what confusing they thing is it. that the practice of software development has changed. And that's, it's changed in machine learning and that's in AI. Correct. And so and they can create their own goals. Machine learning It's does. not quite the, its own goals. It's, it's rather that when you write an algorithm, you know, I, I expect, um, uh, you know, when I started using computers a ridiculously long time ago also, you know, you would write a small program and you would know what every line of code was supposed to do. With and quantum it, computing, you don't. But, but you still should have some ability to control the outcome. Well, I, I think my feeling is that rather than saying, I mean, you, yes, there are, you can put constraints on the outcome. The question is, how do you describe those constraints? And you have to essentially have something like a program to describe those constraints. Let's say you want to say, we want to have balanced treatment. We want okay, to have... So, so let's take it out of technology and just talk about transparency in a way we can all understand. Can we put it in English terms that we're going to make your data well-being? How you use it? Do you sleep? Don't you sleep? How many hours a day? Think about your Fitbit. Who is it going to? We can bring it down to those English language parameters that people understand. Well, I think some parts of it you could. I think the part that you cannot is when you say, we're going to make this give unbiased treatment of, you know, let's say, political directions or something. Uh, well, I, I'm de not even talking unbiased in political directions. There's going to be bias in age, in sex, in race, in ethnicity. There's inherent bias in everything. So um, that given, you can still have other conversations. I mean, my feeling is that rather than labeling, rather than saying we'll have a nutrition label-like thing that says what this algorithm is doing, I think the better strategy is to say, let's give some third party the ability to be the brand that finally decides what you see. Just like with different newspapers, you can decide to see your news through the Wall Street Journal or through the New York Times or but whatever else. ultimately liable if people get hurt uh, by the monetization of this data or the data brokering of some of it? That's a good question. I mean, that's, I, I think that, that it will help to break apart the, the underlying platform, something like Facebook, for example, you kind of have to use it. There's a network effect. And it's not the case that, you know, you can't say, let's break Facebook into a thousand different Facebooks, and you can pick which one you want to use. That's not really an option. But what you can do is to say, when there's a news feed that's being delivered, is everybody seeing a news feed from the same, with the same set of values, with the same brand, or not? And I think the realistic thing is to say, have separate providers for that final news feed, for example. I think that's a, that's a, a possible direction. There's a few other possibilities. Mm -hmm. And that's a way, and, and so your sort of label says, this is the such and such branded news feed, and people then get a sense of, is that the one I like? Is that the one that's doing something reasonable? If it's not, they'll just, as a market matter, reject it. That, that's my thought.